folks, it's DarkFox127 and welcome to another Scrum Creation Kit tutorial video. Today I'm going to be working with creating a merchant and I have done this video before but in this video it's going to cover a little more detail, hopefully a bit more polished off and I'm also going to mention about the dialogue where people have mentioned how they seem to have a common problem where they've set them up as a merchant and when they go to ask them what they sell they don't say anything and you have to sort of keep tapping the menu and there is actually a reason for that it's not actually a bug so we'll be looking through that so to get started you want to create your own actor now I've already gone ahead and done that if you want to know how to make an NPC in great detail then look for my detailed followers tutorial or I'll just leave a link in the description if I remember and that will guide through each of these tabs and really give you great detail on how to set someone up so really the only thing that we need to set up in the, the first tab there, the traits tab, is the voice type. Now I'm going to come back to that, I'm going to leave that for the moment. So we're just going to skip to, let's go to stats. The class you're probably better off setting it as an actual vendor class, but you don't really need to. I mean, um, it's kind of nice to. I suppose we can go ahead, we'll make a, a blacksmith. So I'll set him as a vendor blacksmith. The class is only usually important when you're creating trainers, which has its own set of problems. I won't be going through that in this tutorial, but the, the class shouldn't matter too much on vendors. Now the factions, we're going to alternate click and new, and the main faction that you're going to want is the merchant faction. So we're going to add the job merchant faction, and this is where I might as well go through the voice types. Now the other faction that I always recommend that you add is the faction which is linked to the kind of vendor that you're creating. So in this case it would be a blacksmith. So it would be job blacksmith. Now what the faction does is the merchant allows for the merchant dialogue, the what do I sell. And the other faction here, the job blacksmith faction, the one specific to the job type, what that actually does is adds the specific dialogue for a blacksmith. So whenever you go to a blacksmith, you'll notice they don't just show, um, they don't just say all sorts. Take a look. What they actually say, they tend to go something along the lines of yes, loads of weapons and armor. Please take a look at my inventory. So it's specific to a blacksmith. So the problem with the voice type is if you've selected a voice type and you've set them up as a blacksmith and they're not saying any of the blacksmith dialogue, it's because that voice type isn't compatible with the blacksmith dialogue so you could be selecting a male Khajiit but if there's no Khajiit blacksmiths in the game then he's not going to have the dialogue for a blacksmith so if you do want to use a voice which doesn't seem to have the dialogue for the specific vendor you can simply leave that faction out so if you did have a Khajiit blacksmith for example who doesn't have the dialogue for the blacksmith selling then you leave that faction out and what that will do it will give them a generic saying for when you ask if they've got anything to buy or sell so in this case with just this they'd say something along the lines of take a look and it's as simple as that just look at my inventory so it won't be specific to that so hopefully that makes sense so I'm going to go back and I'm going to select a voice type so I'm actually going to leave that faction out myself so I don't have any problem with the voice type I select so I'm just going to go let's go with a male even toned I think you can probably go under miscellaneous form list type in voice and you usually get form lists which tell you the sort of compatible voices with different things so you could go under here voices for a lumberjack all these voices are good for a lumberjack so if we did want to find a voice that's compatible with a blacksmith it might be in the list somewhere here there we go voices blacksmith so these are all the voices that you can use for a blacksmith which is really helpful so if you don't pick one of these voices and you add that blacksmith dialogue then they're just going to go and they're not going to say anything and you have to keep bashing the button to force into their vendor menu so what we'll actually do then yeah we'll go with We'll go with male young ego and we'll see how that works. And we will add that extra faction in now that we know that it will work or should work with it. So because we know that that voice works with the blacksmith, we can have the blacksmith faction. So it will force that dialogue to say, take a look at my weapons and armors and whatever else. So that's it. Relationships we don't need to set. Keywords you can script, uh, skip. 
Aggression, make sure it's unaggressive or aggressive, even aggressive is pushing it. You just want to be careful because you want them to buy and sell stuff, not try and kill you when you approach. Now I'm going to have his mood as puzzled. I have mentioned what the energy does in my followers tutorial. It's how much they move around and do things. So how much they bounce between different idols around the place, like seating so they don't sit down for too long. So if you give them low energy, they're going to be really lazy. They're probably going to sit on the same chair for hours. And if you put it up to about 100 energy, then they're going to be about quite a bit. So because we're making a blacksmith, I suppose we're going to want him uh, getting up and doing things quite regularly. So I'll set that to 70, get him moving about quite a bit. His confidence will have him as brave because he's a blacksmith. And you probably want to put helps, friends and allies just to be safe on things and no crime on the morality. So that's that. We don't have to mess with too much of the other stuff specifically for merchants. The package, what I'm just going to do, I'm just going to add a default sandbox package in and I'm going to dump them somewhere in the world. So I'm just going to add the sandbox 1024. I'll give them plenty of radius to wander around in. I have got a few tutorials on packages so you can go and check those out if you do want to know more about setting up specific packages wanting them to do certain things during the day and actually having a life like going to bed and stuff so you can go and check that out but I won't be going into it in this tutorial here so the inventory the inventory is a really interesting thing and it's more important than you think when it comes to merchants because merchants sell anything that is in the chest linked to their faction but what people don't realize sometimes is they sell anything that is on them as well so anything that is in their pocket if they've got in their inventory a a wooden staff or an axe or something they tend to actually get that slipped into their selling inventory in my case for a mod like Corinthia Tower that's actually helped me because it's meant that I can put things in the inventory which don't respawn meaning I can sell items that I don't want to have respawn by putting them in their main inventory and then the items that I want to have respawn regularly are all of the items on the actual official chest inside the chest so if I wanted this guy to sell an iron iron battle axe and I didn't want him to sell it again once he sold it so it's really good for selling unique items then I'd put it in his main inventory if I wanted him to sell his, his normal items and have them refresh we'll put all those in the the correct container that we're going to make shortly so spells sounds animations attack data we really don't need to bother with all of that you've got the character gem parts again all this is covered in my NPC creation tutorials my followers tutorials mainly for setting up their facial features and stuff and then that should pretty much be it we'll still have a faction to add but we have to go and create that first so I'm just gonna go ahead click OK confirm that one thing to mention about the face is the grey face bug if you want that fixed then you need to find your actor in the filter list click on your actor hold down control and then press F4 and export the face data so I mean that he's not gonna have the grey face bug and be sure to include those files that are created in your data folder when you go to uploading your mod or packing up a BSA. So that's that, his face is exported and the other thing that we're going to need to do we're going to need to make a faction but because that faction is going to need to link to his chest we need to make the chest that he's going to be using first so this chest is going to contain all of the items that he's going to sell and have stocked up. So we're going to just search for probably a, a good quick fast way if you're making a blacksmith search for blacksmith in the filter and pick one of these already existing ones we're going to duplicate one we're going to edit it df127 blacksmith chest uh, don't really need to give it a name because it's going to be hidden away anyway in the void and as you can see we've got all these options here now one thing to be wary of if you are duplicating one you get the perk which allows for uh, the perk when you're able to invest in a location so you're investing in a certain shop and it's actually listed as a kind of leveled item perk in their inventory that's sort of activated so if you're copying this blacksmith chest from wherever this is then when you get the perk or invest in that place then this chest is going to do exactly the same thing and we don't want that so you want to remove that that perk which may or may not be in this one actually perk masters training goal that's a bit different 
there is a, a perk along the lines of investment it'll say investment in there somewhere make sure you haven't got that one in there and you're all good to go and you can add and remove items change items and decide what you want in here so go ahead and click OK no and then yes because we've already duplicated it and then we're going to want to drag and drop this into where I'm going to place my new merchant now I think what I'm going to do I'm going to go to Morthol and I'm just going to place him in a location I'm thinking of there just to make things easier you can place yours wherever you want you'll probably have a a new custom forge place down somewhere that you want him to to be sort of working with you might have built him an entire place but for now I'm just gonna place my character somewhere here in Morthal if I can find out where it is it's actually the guard outpost in Morthal I'm just gonna have him stand here because there's a spinning wheel and things I think I'll just have him hang around in here although he hasn't got a forge it doesn't really matter we're just gonna see the the merchant thing sort of work. Now you want to drag and drop this chest and you want it somewhere out of the way, somewhere that the player is not going to be able to access it. So usually it's in the void if it's in an interior cell you just dump it in the void. If it's an exterior you usually just sink it right down into the ground and then completely lose it like that because I don't know where it's gone. Ah there it is. And then make sure you can see it visibly. Uh, it's probably good to tap one twice on certain items that are in the way. Make sure that they're, they're not going to get accidentally selected so make sure that, that box is visible in the render window and then we're going to go ahead and create our faction so ultimate click new in the faction section and I'm just going to call this DF127 vendor faction blacksmith blacksmith vendor faction now um, under general make sure it's ticked can be owner go under the vendor section and click on the tick box for vendor and you'll see all these items sort of light up now you can have the start hour and the end hour now this is on a 24 hour clock so make sure that you are putting it in 24 hours so if you want them to start at 8 in the morning and finish at 8 in the evening don't put 8 and 8 it'd obviously be 20 so another thing that you can do if you just want them to be available to buy and sell things all of the time which is quite common in Skyrim for most of the merchants then set the first one to zero and the next one to 24 and that would just be a whole 24 hour rotor they'll always be available to buy and sell stuff so we'll do that then I'm going to edit the location uh, this is where they need to be to be able to sell things the best thing to do with this is just tick it as near self although you can change it but in my experience the best thing to do is use near self. Click OK. The radius we don't really need to mess with for near self. And the vendor list is rather important. Now this is the kind of items that you're allowed to buy and sell with them. So if it was a miscellaneous, if they could sell and um, buy and sell pretty much anything, then you're going to want vendor misc. And what you do if you are selecting miscellaneous, if you want them to buy and sell anything, you need to tick this d uh, not sell or buy you need to tick that option you can set sort of vendor conditions but we're not going to go into that in this tutorial you can make sure that they only buy stolen items but you may need to mess around with adding a few additional factions in for that to work correctly and as you can see the merchant container here now I'm just going to change this because I only want him to sell me blacksmith sort of items so it's, it's weapons and ore and stuff like that and I'm going to untick that not sell and buy because that's only for miscellaneous and then I'm going to select my merchant container, double click on my container, just check that it's correct on the cell and the reference and then we're going to go ahead and click OK. So now we've got that, the only few things left to do, we've got to place our actor in the world and we need to add this faction to him because it's the one step that you can easily forget and then you're wondering what's going on, why things aren't working. You need to go back into your character now, so we'll find Murray here and we're just going to add that faction there we go add that faction in go ahead click OK and then we're going to have to drag Murray in so we're just going to place Murray hanging around here we'll probably see him sort of hanging around on one of these guard posts ignore that texture thing that's not a problem just yes to all if you get any errors 
and we're going to place Murray down there as you can see he's actually got that axe I gave him on his back and he'll probably be selling that in his inventory and that is it we're going to go ahead save this and then we're going to check it out in game okay so here we are in Morthal looks like there's quite a lot of stuff missing here actually um, I have yes. to do my Morthal mod he's actually in completely the wrong place but anyway here's Murray mm -hmm. and as you can see he will the finest weapons yep there we go he sells stuff and because we checked that the dialogue was compatible with the blacksmith dialogue and kept that faction in for the blacksmith he actually says weapons and armor and that's what the whole dialogue thing's all about and he buys and sells stuff and we can probably even gain access to his axe which would you believe it now I've said it he's not actually selling it he's keeping it on him I suppose that's because he's got it equipped but a lot of the time if you do leave things in their inventory and they're a merchant they do tend to sell those as well which is a bit silly but it can work to your advantage in some ways so that is how you create your own merchant I think that pretty much covers everything and as you can see his face data is fine because we exported mm -hmm. it and that is Murray our merchant so you just need to adjust that to whatever merchant you need and it's as simple as that so I hope you found the tutorial helpful useful please check out my main website my anti-social websites all my other videos if you like don't forget to subscribe and that will be that. Thank you very much for watching and I'll speak to you next time.